Hi everyone, my name is Nika and welcome back to my channel. So today I just want to make this really quick or attempt to make this really quick but I wanted to show you how I did my DIY floating shelves and this version I have leather straps used as the brackets so I'm just gonna go ahead and show you how I did it. I am no way a professional at all but just sharing how I did this in the, in the most affordable way possible. So I originally wanted to do this, but I just never really acted upon it. But I saw a video um, by um, JC Marie, and she was redoing her dining room kitchen area. I was like, oh my gosh, like why didn't I do this before? So I finally went ahead and did this. This is actually a lot cheaper than um, most shelves that I looked at. So I did three shelves, and this was made about $60 and under. So it's quite an affordable thing to do. You'll need some wood. I got wood from Lowe's. This is probably going to be this one of the two expensive things that you're going to get. I was going to make three shelves, so I have three uh, planks of wood. This cost me about $6 a piece of wood, and I actually needed them six feet long, and they were already six feet, so it worked out in my favor. So if you do need them to be cut any shorter, you can have the people at Lowe's to cut them for you or you can cut it on your own. Second thing you'll need are the leather straps. This is actually probably going to be the most expensive thing that you're going to have to purchase. I wanted to try to find the cheapest alternative here. So just like JC Marie, she used belts um, at Target and they're about like $14 a piece. I didn't feel like I was going to buy $14 worth of one belt and I needed to make six shelves so I went to Walmart and bought these brown belts for three dollars a piece. The next thing you'll need is screws to screw it into the wall. Um, the screws that I used were wood screws. I again am not a professional so this is what I used to screw it into the wall and then you'll also need some nails to support the uh, bracket or the belt and put it on the wood. The last thing that you'll need are the sandpaper, which was about $5 I got from Lowe's. And I also got a wood treatment oil. Um, I got from Ikea. It was only $2.50 in the as is section, so I said, hey, why not? But it gives you a little something to warm up that wood if you do want that. So the wood that I use is a pine wood. Again, I got that at Lowe's. And... Um, you can go ahead and buy like the more premium wood if you want to, but those were like $35 a piece and I kind of was like, no. Nah. So as far as the wood goes, it's pretty self-explanatory. Once you have everything cut to size, go ahead and sand down your wood to make it as smooth as possible. And I ended up wiping it down with a wet cloth afterwards. I went straight into staining and all of that together took me about a half hour to do and I let that just sit outside for a minute for it to dry. The next part was to make the brackets. This one is a little bit harder, I guess you can say. It's gonna take you a little bit more time than you that you would think, but when I went to the store, I bought the small slash medium um, belt, so if you can get them all in the same size, that would actually work out a lot faster for you. I didn't have any of the leather um, punch holes or the puncher so it was a little bit more difficult but what I did was instead of taking the time to punch through two holes in one of the belts I used one of the holes that are already there so it saved me some work and time so just for example I have my belt right here I ended up cutting the belt right here like where the little like handle would start and then I cut it after the first hole. So this is the first hole right here. I didn't cut it underneath. I actually cut it right up top before I hit the second hole. So there you'll have a little guide hole there so you don't have to punch through another hole. After those pieces are cut off, you're going to be left with this clean strap right here. So I just kind of put it together and made a little guide, marked it with a pen. And then there on the inside you will be able to um, make your other hole. Now since you don't have a um, leather punch hole, assuming that you don't, I ended up nailing a hole through it at first and then I took the screw that I was going to use and screwed it all the way through until I made a hole completely. Once that was completed I went ahead and took the board and I kind of like held it tight so 
just pretend that this top part isn't here but I held it like this so it was nice and even and put the wood in there so one side's gonna be laid completely flat that's gonna be against the wall so it's gonna kind of look like a triangle like this I ended up nailing this part against the back of the board so that it will have a nice support when you hang it and I also made two nail holes in the bottom and nailed it against the board. Once you go ahead and put those on and it's nailed in, I recommend you using um, a friend and two, two extra people would actually work the best. I did them myself because I was very impatient and honestly it would make everything that much faster if you do have a second person. So it's really easy if you have the other person hold it up and then you're holding the other side to screw them in the wall that would work out the best and then having that third person just to make sure everything is straight just makes everything that much easier but if you don't have anybody you could also you know do the hard way and like prop it up against something but I ended up always um, also using the um, little laser beam balance balancer I don't know what I don't know what the technical term is so on with the laser so it makes sure that your lines are straight but I ended up using that as a guide and it actually helped me a lot um, keeping my brackets and the um, shelving straight and I'm pretty sure that it's pretty self-explanatory from there but you just use the screw and screw all the way through the leather belts and into the wall um, if you can use like a little drill to um, kind of make your guide holes it would work out the best because it's really hard to just screw it into the wall but again I am NOT a professional this is just how I did it and it worked out and nothing has fallen yet and I can fit like my planners and everything on there well hopefully I made this pretty much as streamlined as possible I recorded this before and I was just talking too much so hopefully this is like to the point that's pretty much it for this video if you have any questions please leave a comment below if you have any video suggestions let me know as well make sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one